Hello everybody, it's Peggy Day here for Peggy Day Models. Okay, fellas, I haven't been here for a little while. I've been too busy on other projects. Uh, I've been working on the Victory, so I'll probably have a video of that coming up pretty soon. I've been kind of working on that here off and on. But I have adventures that kind of came, out, came in, came to mind, I haven't done in a long time. I haven't built any paper models in a long time, guys, a long time. And it's been calling on me very bad. Well, so far I've been working on uh, two of them so far. Uh, right, right now I'm working on the, uh, this is video number one uh, for my paper model build of the uh, emigrant ship, the SS Priscia. Now, I'll bring it over here behind me and we'll zoom in a little bit and we'll take a look at the Priscia here. These were the early transatlantic liners that transferred people from the old world to the new world, from the new world to the old world. In the latter 19th century, 1872 to 1880s, I think these things were actually were used quite a lot. They got away from the clipper ships. A lot of people, a lot of the passengers that, that um, booked passage on clipper ships, like the Flying Cloud, the Young America, uh, the, um, the, the Cuddy Sark and, and a bunch of others. Uh, they were rough sailing ships because those clipper ships were not made for passengers. They were made for for the great key race. They are made for racing and, and get their goods to the uh, to the buyer before the next guy gets there to win the ribbons and stuff. You know, people who wanted the, the book passage could do so on a clipper ship. And they found the clipper ships are very, very... Uh, not only they rolled too much, they presented a lot of seasickness. A lot of people just couldn't, didn't. It was rough. They, they, it took sometimes three to four months for them to get to get to from the old world to the new world, or, or vice versa. As technology progressed from steam back in the 1850s, they used steam pretty much as an as a as a um, as a form of a, of power for these ships. A lot of them were sail, and uh, so we learned a lot that from during the Civil War back in 1863, 62, 64. During the Civil War, when they had uh, ironclads, especially like the Admiral Raphael, uh, Captain Raphael Sims, famous, famous uh, commerce raider, the, uh, the the Alabama, it had a retractable screw, and it was also sail too. And the same thing on the. Uh, on the sloop of war too, the uh, the Kearsarge, her her, uh, her, uh, her, her the ship that, that sunk her at Sherisburg over in France, and uh, well, so dur during the later part of the 18th century, a lot of immigrants knew that technology was getting better, and they started building these steel hull ships, and these steel hull ships were all you know they were all steel hull. And they, they were used uh, for, for passenger liners. Yeah, like I said earlier in the video, in the beginning of the video, these were the early transatlantic type uh, 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 ocean liners that they used. Trans and these were immigrant ships. And of course, Cunard uh, had the Oceanic class, which came out probably by 1901 and 1902. And they got better. They went along too, because other other countries are building a lot more better ocean liners. So these things here, they they lasted probably a good 30 years. By 1902, the Frisia was uh, scrapped. They had no use for it anymore. She had an old steel hull, and her, her option for power was either sail or steam. So what much better can it be to assure the passengers on ships like this at that time, that era, that. If we run short of coal, we can always set sail and we can get there by sail or by steam. Beautiful options right there and they work very well and that's what these are designed for. But by, 19, by the 1880s, 1890s, they got away from sail. They had to make up their mind there was going to be steam powered all the way or there was going to be sail. And sail was an ancient way of, of power because it was superseded by progress which was going to steam. So this thing is all cold fire, imagine it was. And it's just a beautiful ship for her day. Now this is a card model. I got this as a download uh, from Heiko Models. Uh, the same description up here, as you can see. 
on a scale of 1 200. This camera's like it wants a wonder on me. There we go, we'll do it more. Yeah, I didn't take up that knot right there. Anyway, this 1 200 scale. I got files of this that I got, I got. I got that in the main too. Now I got the battleship main by the same gentleman who designed the ship. Uh, she's very pretty and it's 1 200 scale. And um, this ship you got, opens up a lot of doors for scratch building too, as well. So I'm going to add some lot of scratch building to this thing too, as well as, as the kit. So far on the build, I got the hull all done and everything. I'm starting to commence on the deck furniture. I got the windlass done, and I got the uh, the capstan. I got the anchor crane installed. I got the companion ways and all the skylights to done down below uh, for the passengers uh, to uh, to enjoy their passage with a little indoor closure with skylights. And uh, so I, I got me a real set for this thing. I'm gonna put on it and uh, make it look like something. I get done. Okay, I'm going to back off with the camera, guys. We're going to take a look at this thing. How much will Frankie Day's done on this thing? Now, that, this, this building never was introduced. It just came... It just came from my... It just came, just came to me, guys. It's all paper right here, guys. I've done a little... Uh, weathering on the hull right here. Because these things did, were, they did take on rust. And they did kept them as clean as they could. So the rust was kind of heavy down below because she was, had very low freeboard these things had. And um, they would very, very much uh, get rust from being out in the sea all the time. So I think I imagine it probably took maybe about a month and a half for, for something like this to... to um, to make a passage from uh, from Europe to to America so there's all a paper model here fellas <clears throat> so I got fittings to do back there with the deck furniture we'll swing around we'll take a we'll zoom in a little bit take a look at the deck furniture of this thing There got the anchor crane installed. And I got all the fittings on here, skylights, companion ways. <coughs> Excuse me guys. Make the seat aft. Kit gives you a very real nice attractive display stand. And uh, a real nice stand right here. It has a the name of the ship on there, it's by Hamburg America Line, 1872. So these things were, were used at that time, and the Oceanic class came in from Cunard as early as 1901 or 1902. And they favored these in the way. These ships had no bilge kills to them, no bilge kills. Because bilge kills weren't thought of, weren't used that much, because hey, you don't see no bilge kills on a clipper ship. You see no no bilge kills on the uh, on the uh, Commerce Raider Alabama and also the Sloop of War USS Kearsarge. They didn't. They weren't thought of. Bilge kills were not presented on uh, on ships and probably until very, until about the end of the 19th century. When they started venturing in the dreadnoughts, then they start laying in the kills. All metal hull. You had bashers, man, that put all these put all these plates on their hull plates on the bottom. The way light hits it, it makes these plates look rough, but they're not. They're pretty smooth. They're like pretty smooth. When the light hits them a certain way, they they seem to disappear.
had a beautiful champagne stern like they had. I'm <coughs> driving the screw. And like I say, if this ship ever ran out of trouble, like running out of coal or something, they can always hoist up sail, make sail. So like I say, that kind of made, that made the, 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 uh, the passengers feel kind of secure because they're used to sail anyway. So if this thing ever ran out of coal or had an engine breakdown or something, they just make up set sail and go sailing on this thing. Okay, I've been toying with something else too, so I'll probably have another video of this coming for you in a couple of days, guys. <clears throat> this thing's about 30 something inches long, it's pretty good size, scale 1 200. Okay, boy, it's not so big, I'm running into things here. Let me have another one here for you. I'm working on. This is the Hanseatic. So far, I'm putting the superstructures on there. And, um, it's all Warline scale. It was the one 250. And I like building card models. I build them all the time. I'm always constantly, uh, doing nourishing on this thing. Beautiful. Got it out. So that's what I'm working on, fellas. I'm working on this Hanseatic. This used to be the Empress of, Empress of Japan. And uh, they took the whole ship. The whole ship was completely rebuilt. And they gave it called the TSS Hanseatic. It's a beautiful ship. So like I say, guys, card models build pretty good. I, I, I love the hell out of card models. I can't get enough of them. They, they just take skill to build these things, and you just got to take your time when building them. Don't get discouraged because it's paper. I can make as many things as I want as long as I don't sell them. I got a file for this. I can make a, I can download thousands of these things that I want. But one's, one's enough for me, so I got a little spot. I can keep this thing in the trailer, too, here a little bit. Okay, I'm going to push this out of the way when in this video. And uh, so you guys stay posted, fellas. If I have something on the victory coming up for you, probably another week or so. I'm too busy working on these card models. And I'd like to thank all my comment, comments, commenters, and everything, and all my wonderful people out there that, that comment on my videos. I'm very honored each one of you. And God bless you guys. And, uh, and uh, make Mama happy. Take care of little ones. And we'll catch you a couple of days on video number two. On the TSS uh, SS Fencia, the immigrant ship of the 1870s. This is Frankie Day signing up for Frankie Day Models. Make Mama happy, and we'll see you guys later. Thanks, fellas. God bless you guys.